In this Blender follow along sculpting tutorial, we're gonna be creating this cartoon face for beginners. So if you're somewhat of a beginner, but you know the basic things like some of the basic brushes and some of the shortcuts and things like that, but you're still a beginner, then this tutorial is for you. Now, if you haven't watched my sculpting in Blender for beginners tutorial, I would really suggest that because I go over all the main brushes that I use, the shortcut keys, and I just go over all the main things that I think are important for beginners to know when they're starting out with sculpting in Blender. So you can definitely check that out with the link in the description or the card up on the screen to my Blender beginner sculpting tutorial. Now, as I talked about in that beginner sculpting tutorial, I do think using a drawing tablet is really important. A screen drawing tablet is really awesome, but if you only have a pad tablet, I think that's gonna be way better than using a mouse. So you can use a mouse for this tutorial if you do not have a drawing tablet, but I think you should definitely get a drawing tablet if you can. So here I am in Blender and my screen drawing tablet is right in front of me. What I'm gonna do is just delete everything and I have my keyboard next to me, next to my drawing tablet. So I'm using my left hand to sculpt and then I'm using my right hand to use the shortcut keys because I'm left-handed. So I like to sculpt with my left hand. So I'm just gonna select everything and delete it. Let me uh, turn on my screencast keys also so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. Right down there in the corner, you can see what buttons I'm pressing. And one more thing before we start, getting reference photos can be really helpful. So if you wanna go ahead and just grab some different reference photos, maybe some reference photos of some realistic heads or maybe some other head sculpts, or if you wanna grab some reference images of like some anatomy, head anatomy, or things like that, you can go ahead and hopefully you have like a second monitor or something that you can put that on the side. So I would definitely suggest grabbing some reference images before you start. So I'm just gonna delete all these things and then I will press Shift A and I'm gonna add a UV sphere. Now I wanna start off with more geometry so I'm gonna press Control 2 to add a subsurf modifier. You can also just go up here and add the subdivision surface modifier and then with my mouse or my pen over hovered over the modifier, I'm gonna press Control A and Control A is going to apply that. So now if I tap into edit mode, you can see we have a lot more vertices to work with. Now this is just a personal preference, but I like to actually change the focal length because I think it helps me to sculpt a little bit better and it just looks nicer. So what I'm gonna do is press the N key and that'll bring up this panel. Click on the view here and you can see there's this focal length. It's set to 50 right now. I actually prefer to use 70 when I'm sculpting. I just think it helps a little bit better and it just looks a little bit nicer, but that's totally up to you. You can just use 50 if you want. Okay, now let's hop over to this sculpting tab right up here. And now we're in sculpting mode and you can see there's the brushes here and brushes over here and some different settings up here as well. And again, definitely check out my sculpting in Blender for beginners tutorial. Link will be in the video description for that because I go over a bunch of these different settings. Okay, now I'm gonna choose a matte cap. So I'm gonna click right here and you can see it's set to matte cap. I'm just gonna choose one that I like. Some of these matte caps I actually made myself. Some of them I've added from the older Blender version. Um, I actually like to use this one for sculpting. So it's kind of this red bright one and this one is built into blender So you can just add that if you want to or use any matte cap that you want to use I like this red one though because I really feel like it gives me a good View of the forms of the sculpt and then another thing I'm gonna do. I don't use these uh, You may want to use them if you want to you can like drag this around to move your view But I don't like to use these so I'm gonna press this button and that'll get rid of that uh, widget thing right there. So I'm gonna start off by using this clay strips brush and I'm actually gonna drag this panel out so that you can see the brushes a little bit better. And then over here on the radius, you can see that there's this button and this is the size pressure. And what this does is it changes the size of the brush depending on how hard you're pressing with your pen. And I actually don't really like this. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then also I'm gonna turn off this brush button right here because what that does is it keeps the same size of the brush with all the other brushes. So if I change a brush, it's gonna be the same size, but I actually don't want that. I want each brush to have a different size. So I'm just going to turn that off. So first I'm gonna start off by just pushing the size of the head down a bit because the head isn't perfectly round. So I'm gonna to go to the grab brush with G, press F to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna press one to go to front view just so that I know what the front view is. I'm just gonna zoom out here and then just grab this and push it down a bit. Kind of go onto the side here and just push it down because a head isn't perfectly round unless it's super cartoony, but I want it to be somewhat cartoony, but look somewhat real. Okay, so now let's pull down the jaw. 
So here's the front of the head. I'm going to just using the grab brush, pull this down. I think it's really important to always be moving around and looking at different sides of your sculpt, because if you just bring it down on one side, you may not notice that there's a shape that's kind of wrong on another side. So move around. I also think that moving back a little bit, like if you're super close, it may be a little bit hard to see the overall shape of the sculpt. So, so when you're putting in the big main shapes of your sculpt, I think that being a little bit far away can also help a little bit. Okay, there we go. So like his eyes are going to be here, his mouth's going to be here, his nose is going to be there. Okay, let's save this project. So I'm going to go file and click on save as. I'm just going to save this in a folder on my computer as head.blend. The name's right behind me. I'm just going to call it head.blend and then click on save as. All right, so now we're going to carve in where the eyes are. What I'm going to do is just zoom in here. I'm going to go to the clay strips brush and then I'm going to turn on the Dine Topo now. So I'll just go down here. You can see there's Dine Topo. I'm going to turn that on, press OK, open this up. I'm going to change this to maybe like a four. If that's too small of detail and your computer is lagging a bit, you may need to turn it up a little bit, but I think this is going to be okay for most of you. So now I'm going to hold down control and start sculpting and we're going to carve in where the eyes are. So kind of like the eye sockets. And then later on, we're going to be adding um, spheres for the eyes. So just carving that in. Okay. And then also you could hold down control and just carve in here with the clay strips brush to kind of make the side of the face a little bit flatter. I'm going to hold down the shift key and just smooth that out a little bit. And then without holding down the control key, I can just sculpt and just make a little bit of this coming out here for, because the forehead kind of comes out a little bit. So I'm going to just go like that. Okay. And then hold down the shift key, just smooth that out just a little bit. Okay, and then there are the cheekbones, so I'm going to add a little bit of clay coming out here. This is why getting like anatomy references, like getting some like facial anatomy images and stuff can be really helpful, uh, so you can get a better understanding of the face. And we are going to be, of course, making a cartoon face, but using the structure from a realistic face can really help you to make it more stylized. And if you'd really like to get into stylized characters, I would suggest you actually learn how to make realistic characters first, because I, I think that can really help you. I'm still learning sculpting, of course, myself, but I've heard a lot of artists say that if you want to do stylized stuff, you should really learn realistic stuff as well, because stylized stuff is really just a stylized version of realism. Okay, now let's uh, make the chin here. So I'm going to add some clay right here to make the chin. And then I want to make the jaw a bit more uh bigger kind of showing it more so i'm gonna add the jaw right in there and then just filling that in a little bit okay let's take a look i think this is coming out a little too much i'm gonna hold down control and go in a little bit also i'm gonna turn on the auto smooth because generally that'll just help to keep the sculpt a little bit smoother so this auto smooth setting right here i'm just going to click on this make it like a 0.1 very small you don't want it to be too big, but you can see that can just make the sculpt a little bit smoother. Okay, let's go ahead and start doing the nose now. So I'm going to just start, so I'm just going to start bringing out the nose here. And I think I'll switch over to the draw brush because I think that might help a little bit. I need to make my brush bigger. Before we get any further, I do want to go over some of the placements and proportions of things, because if you're first starting out, then the proportions can be really hard to get right. So just a few general things to help you out. Um, generally, the eyes should be about in the center of the face. So you can see here to here is about the same from here to here. So hopefully that'll help out a bit. And then the head on mine, I think that's pretty good. Although I will go to the grab brush, maybe pull it down a little bit more in something like that. Okay, and then while we're still using the grab brush, I'm going to pull out the nose a little bit. Now, when I was first starting out with sculpting, a huge mistake that I would make is I would make the face very flat. So I would only sculpt from like the front of the face. So definitely move around. Um, the face is very round. If you look at it from top view, you can see I'm making it very round right here because the face is very round. It's not flat. Um, also, Another mis big mistake that I would make, I'm going to go over to the clay strips brush. Um, the, the mouth is very round. If you're looking at my face, like right here, the mouth kind of looks a bit flat, 
But if you look at anatomy and stuff, then you'll kind of start to realize that the mouth is very round. It is curving around your face. So that was a mistake that I would make a lot. I would just kind of uh, sculpt in the mouth and it would be very flat. So definitely try to make this round. So have the front of the mouth coming out a bit and then having the back of the mouth going in a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and add the nostrils. So I'm gonna be using the clay strips brush, F to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna sculpt down and to the side. So sculpting the nose can be kind of hard. I still struggle with it sometimes. Um, let's make a little area kind of coming down here, kind of the bottom of the nose, like that. Okay, and then have this coming around. So we're going to have the nostrils right there. And then I think this might be a little too long. I'm going to go to the grab brush, kind of bring it in just a little bit, maybe a little bit more out because it is kind of a stylized nose. Okay, like that. I think I'm also going to pull this down a little bit so it's a bit more flat. Also something you can do to flatten out your sculpt if you want to make kind of the uh, planes of the head, you can use the scrapes brush, make it a little bit bigger. You can go along here, kind of flatten out some areas. Like if I want to flatten the nose, I can sculpt in there and you can see it's flattening that out. So super awesome brush. I really like using this brush. Okay. Now uh, let's go back to the clay strips. And I'm going to hold down control and start carving in the nostrils. Now I've found that when you're carving way in like this, the auto smooth can kind of make it harder. So I'm going to turn the auto smooth off because it just seems like um, it carves in slower when you have the auto smooth on. Okay, let's try to fix this shape a little bit because I want this to be more of an oval kind of pointed like this. So I'm going to go to the grab brush and kind of bring it down a little bit. Okay, now you can see here we need to kind of crease that in. So I'm going to go to the crease brush, this one right here, make my brush a little bit bigger, and then you can kind of crease around here. On the Dine Topo here, I'm going to make this five now because I don't want it to be too high detail. Hopefully, your computer is still able to handle detail this high, but it is frustrating sometimes if you're trying to sculpt and it's just not <laughs> kind of keeping up. Okay, so I'm kind of carving in there. I also want to carve in, uh, we're going to have the character smiling. And when you smile, you got these uh, creases right here in the cheeks. So I'm going to carve in that kind of the smile right there. And then we need to add more uh, skin right here. So I'm going to go to the clay strips and kind of bring this in. I'll turn the auto smooth back up to 0.1. Kind of go along here and give a little bit more because the cheeks really come out. And again, this is this is why um, using reference photos can really help. So let's do that. I'm going to save this again. File save. Make sure you're saving a lot. You can press Control S. I just press Control S all the time when I'm working on a project um, to just save it all the time. Okay. Now, yeah, this is going to be stylized. So let's uh, make like a big chin. I think that would look kind of funny. So I'm going to make a big chin here. I'm just going to turn off the auto smooth right now. It seems to be not really helping. Okay. Make kind of a, a big chin. We could maybe make like a little dimple in his chin. So I'm going to hold down control and sculpt in. Okay. For this, I'm going to go a little higher detail to back. I'm going to go back to four for this. Okay. And then smooth that out. You can hold down the shift key and smooth it out. Try not to smooth it out too much because then you kind of smooth out all that, you know, detail and form that you made. So, so definitely use the smoothing sparingly because if you just like smooth everything out, like I'm like, oh, well that kind of looks rough, smooth it out. It can kind of, you know, <laughs> lose a lot of detail. So just try to use it sparingly. All right. Now I want to make the smile and right now I need to kind of pull this out more. So I'm going to go to the grab brush and just pull this out more so that he can smile bigger. Maybe pull the chin out. That might look funny a little bit more. You can see this is kind of a little too round. I want to make that a little bit sharper so I can just pull that down. Maybe bring it in a little bit. Okay, remember to look at your sculpt all different sides to see how it's doing. Because sometimes I'm like sculpting from here and then I don't realize that maybe the head is too big or something. As I said earlier, the mouth really comes out. 
So what I'm going to do is zoom in here with the grab brush and kind of pull this out to really make the front come out because the teeth go around. Also, when you're sculpting, using reference images of like skulls can really help. So if you can find some anatomy references of like the anatomy of the skull, that can actually really help. I know that might sound crazy. When I was starting out, I was like, well, you're not going to be able to see the skull because we're making a character, you know? So why would you need to know that? But the skull is the, you know, the underlying form. It's the structure of the head. So and also looking at like the fat pads and the, where the different muscles are can really help. Okay, so now I'm going to carve in the mouth here. So I'm going to go to uh, the clay strips brush, make it kind of small, hold down control, and kind of carve that in. Maybe he's kind of like laughing, like, ha ha. <laughs> it is definitely frustrating when I'm sculpting and like, it's just turning out really bad. I'm still, of course, learning sculpting. Um, I've definitely come a long way, though. When I started out, my faces were really bad. Okay, so we're carving this in here. This is really rough, so I'm going to uh, just kind of sculpt the lips a little bit. Kind of give that a little more thickness on the side there, and then just hold down the shift key. Just smooth that out a little bit, because it is pretty rough. I'm actually going to go to the draw brush and go in here. I think the broad draw brush can help a lot when you're kind of carving way in like that. There we go. Okay. Really push that back because I do want to add like some teeth and maybe even a tongue. So give some nice space. Okay. Now I'm noticing here that let's just save this again. I'm going to go file and save this again. Now I'm noticing here that it looks like to me, I can see that this part is very small. There's not really enough space here. So I'm going to pull the nose up a little bit and then that'll give more space to the mouth because you can see there's like all this space for the uh, eyes and everything and then it just feels kind of squished here. So I'm going to use the grab brush, kind of bring this up a little bit to give more space. Pull the end there out. So there's really kind of some stretching, you know, of the skin right there. Okay, that's looking better. I like how there's a lot more space there. I think I'm going to pull the nostrils up a little bit more. Now I want to add a little bit more like muscles and a little bit of fat on the side of his face. So I'm going to go over to the clay strips and kind of bring that up. I'll turn the auto smooth again to 0.1, just so that it's a bit smooth. Kind of add in some more skin right there. And then I'm going to go around this just to define that a little bit more. So I'll go back and forth down this right here. And then also I'm going to hold down control, kind of cut into this just a tiny bit, and then just carve here, make that a little bit nicer. I'm going to just very lightly use the smooth brush uh, by holding down shift and just going along there, just smoothing it out a tiny bit. All right, so looking at it from front view, I feel like this is very kind of chunky. So I'm going to use the grab brush, bring that back a little bit. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add in the eyes. Now I'm going to go file and save this again. And then I'm going to go back to the layout here. Uh, let's press shift C and make sure the 3d cursor is in the center there. I'm going to press shift a, not shift S shift a, and I'm going to grab a UV sphere. And then uh, without moving it, I'm going to tab into edit mode and select it all. And I'll press G, S, just kind of bring it into place. It's a little bit hard because my keyboard is all the way over here. Okay, and then once it's kind of into position like this, I'm going to press R to rotate, X on the X axis, and type in 90 for 90 degrees, and enter. So now the top of the sphere is pointing out. And I'll just scale that down a little bit and kind of set it in the eye sockets, just like that. And then I'm just going to shade that smooth, go into edit mode, and I will hold down alt and click on this loop, then hold down shift and alt and click on this, and then just hold down shift and click on this loop. And I'm going to bring these out a little bit. So it's kind of popping out a little bit, then press control R to add a loop cut. I'll just bring that down a little bit and just scale it down just a little bit and maybe bring it back a bit. 
Maybe that's just a tad bit too far out. I'm gonna double tap G, bring this loop in a little bit, just make it something like that. And then I think the eyes are just a tiny bit too big, so I'm gonna scale this whole thing down in edit mode. So since we edited this in edit mode, the origin point is still in the center here. Um, so what I can do is click on add modifier and add a mirror. And when I add that mirror, it's going to bring it to the other side. Ooh, he looks kind of angry. Now, if your origin point got messed up, if it wasn't in the very center, you can click on the mirror object and just choose the sphere here, and then it will mirror it in between the face. Just kind of make sure it's in the center. Um, one thing to note is that generally there is about one eye size in between the two eyes. So if you can imagine this eye, there's probably about the same amount of space right in there. If I press shift D, you can see just about the same size, maybe just a tad bit uh, different. I might just like pull this out a little bit away from each other. And then one last thing, just make sure that your eye isn't going way far out or way far back in. And then let's go back into sculpt mode. Now this here, this is like really lumpy, like right there at the top of the nose. This is like really big. I'm going to uh, use the grab brush and just pull that in a little bit. Oh, and I went into sculpt mode on the eyes because I had the eyes selected. So I need to go back here, select the face, and then go back into sculpting. Okay, let's save this again. File and save. And then yeah, with the grab brush, I'm just going to pull this back, back here a little bit. Now I want to make him kind of look like he's happy, but with how the eyebrows are, he looks not happy. So I'm going to just like make these kind of come up and make this go down a little bit. Now he looks a little like sad. <laughs> okay. Pull this back a little bit. That's better. I'm going to go to the clay strips press. Just uh, make that a little bit bigger. Let's hold down control and make this a little bit going back in. And then let's kind of work on this area. So I'm going to hold down control carve in here. Cause yeah, the nose, is smoother than that. So I'm going to carve that in, maybe carve this in a little bit, smooth out that just a little bit. Okay. Now I think the nose is a little bit too crazy right now. It's kind of coming way out. It's also a bit sharper right here. So I'm going to hold down control, carve that in, make it a bit smoother. And uh, the Dine Topo isn't on anymore. And that's because we went back into layout and then went back into sculpting. So we went back into object mode. So I just need to turn that on again and then we can use the Dine Topo. Okay. And then I'm going to use the grab brush again, pull this in just a little bit, maybe pull the, the top of the nose out a little bit. And then this just in a little bit, maybe just smooth that out a little bit. All right, let's go back here and kind of work on this area. Make sure it's not coming too far out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and do the eyelids. So the eyelids I find to be pretty hard. So definitely if you want to grab some reference images of eyelids um, or a sculpt of eyelids, that can definitely help. One really important thing to remember is that the eyelids aren't flat. They go around the eye and the eye is very round. So let's uh, do this now. So I'm going to use the clay strips brush. I'm just going to start going around the eye. Just keep on going and it'll kind of come through here. Go down. And then something else about the eyes is usually the bottom eyelids are a little bit more flat, whereas the top eyelids are a bit more like sharp. Like they kind of come up like this, go over straight and then come down a little bit. Now I think the eyes are too far out. You can see that's pretty far out. So what I'm going to do is go into object mode, select this, and then press G and Y and just bring it back just a little bit. Oh, he looks angry again. <laughs> go click on this object and go back into sculpt mode. Okay. Turn on dyno topology. Uh, the shortcut key for using the dyno topo is control D and then just click on that. Okay. Okay. Let's do the bottom ones. Okay, now you can see here, it's way too small right here, and then there's way too much space over here. So I need to uh, use the grab brush, make that a little bit smaller, and kind of pull this in a bit, and then pull this up a bit. And then the front here, I want this to be, again, going around the eyelids. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit more so that it's coming around the eyelids. I mean the eyeball. The eyelids are 
going around the eyeball. Okay, that's looking better. He looks a little bit tired. If you make the eyelids way down, he looks kind of tired. <laughs> so let's make that up. I want him to be like happy, alert. Okay. Another common problem that I had when I was starting out sculpting and I'm trying to make this stylized, but I'm having this problem a little bit is these eyelids are very thick. Now, if you want the eyelids to be that thick, you can, but eyelids are definitely not that thick. They're a lot thinner. So what I'm going to do is go to the clay strips and then I'll actually hold down shift and smooth that out a little bit, but then I'll just hold down control and just lightly go along here and make the eyelids uh, less thick. And then this right here, just kind of smooth that out a little bit so that angle isn't so strong. Just carve in there. Okay. Okay. And then right here, carve this in. Okay. And then I, I want the eyelid, the tip of the eyelid to still be kind of round. What I'm going to do is use the draw brush make it a lot smaller and just go along the very edge of it, kind of make that pop a little bit. So it's coming out a bit more. Okay. And then smooth it out just a little bit with S. There we go. Okay. And then this is kind of round. I do want to actually sharpen up the eyelids a little bit. That's looking pretty nice though. What I'm going to do, is go over to the crease brush and then hold down control. And you can see if I just sculpt normally, it's going to crease it in. But if I hold down control and sculpt, it's going to bring it out and sharpen it a little bit. So it'll just sharpen that edge of the eyelid up a little bit. Sweet. There we go. Let me just look at the shape here. I think I'll grab the grab brush, pull it down just a little bit. Try to define that shape. Sweet. I like that. Now I can use the crease brush again and on the edges here, just kind of carve away to kind of sharpen up the edges and then hold control, sharpen that up again. You can see this is like coming out a lot and this is only going in a little. So I'm going to use the grab brush and make that a little bit more even to how big it's coming out. Okay. And if you've been looking at reference images down here, right in between the nose and the mouth, there's like a little indent right there. So I'm going to add that in. I'll go to the clay strips brush, hold down control and just kind of go carve that in a little bit, smooth it out. And then I want to make the uh, lips kind of pop out a little bit. So I'm going to just sculpt around the lips and make them a bit bigger. Make the lips come up a little bit more here and then kind of go down. And if something like this happened, this is because what I did is I used the back button on my uh, pen and I pulled it out and I sometimes accidentally do this. Just press control Z to undo it. Looks pretty weird. I don't know why this is happening. Um, in the other Blender version before Blender 2.8, I wasn't having this problem. So it must be a newer thing. Okay, so let's keep on doing this. You can see here that I was sculpting up here. So when I rotate around and zoom in, it's kind of zooming in right here, but I want to zoom in on the mouth. So what I can do is sculpt a little bit and then press the period key and that'll hop to it. You can also hold down alt and then click and that'll jump to an area. And the lips get kind of smaller as they get to the edge. Make a lip right there. Okay. Hold down control and go uh, against it to kind of make it a little bit stronger. I'm going to go to the grab brush again and just play around with the, uh, the shape of the mouth just a little bit. All right. So I'm going to take a break from the front of the face for a little while. I'm just going to save this again. Let's go ahead and do the ears. So a few tips on placing the ears at the right place. Um, they should be right behind the jaw. So kind of like right here. And then also the top of the ear should be about the top of where the eye is. So about here. Now, of course, if you're stylizing this, you could make giant ears or do whatever you want. So I'm actually going to use the draw brush. I found that to be really helpful. And I'm going to yeah make sure that it's kind of at the top of the 
uh, eye right here, and then it's going to go down to probably about around here. So I'm going to just kind of go up and just start to draw that in. Go around here, trying to make a stylized ear, and we will kind of carve that in later. Carve that out of the face. And then let's hold down control and go in here to kind of carve that back in a little bit. You can also, uh, if you want to make the jawline a little bit more pronounced, you can bring that in. Just hold down control and go along there to make the jawline a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to use the grab brush and kind of pull this around a bit. And you can see that's a bit thick there, so I'll bring that down just a little bit. And then go back to the draw brush, hold down control, kind of carve in there. Now, if you're if you're struggling with this and your sculpt isn't looking as good as mine, don't worry because I've been sculpting for like three years and I still have a lot to learn. I have definitely learned a lot, but sculpting takes a lot of time and practice. So don't worry with how your sculpt is turning out. Just have fun and keep on learning and you'll get better. Don't worry when you're first starting out about how good it looks. Let me just throw up on the screen some of my first sculpts just to show you that, yeah, when I started out like three plus years ago, I, my sculpts weren't very good, so, but you, you can definitely improve. It just takes a lot of time and practice. Okay, now these, they're coming out, but they're a little bit too far out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first carve in there just a little bit deeper to make sure they're nice and back. So using the draw brush, holding down control, carving in the ear just a little bit more. And then after we carve it in more, I will kind of push the ear back a little bit. And I'm also using the uh, shift key to smooth it out. Okay, so now that I've kind of carved that in as far as I want, I'm going to use the grab brush, kind of pull that in, just pull that back a little bit more so it's a bit flatter to the head. Okay, now I think this bottom part is like too big. So I'm going to pull that in a little bit. Pull this in a little bit. Okay, go to the, I like using the draw brush when I'm doing the ear because the draw brush is very round and it's just, I don't know, it just works really well for ears. Now, if some parts are too thick, you can also like hold down the control key, go along there. I'm also going to kind of make the inside of the ear go in a little bit. So using that draw brush, I'm holding down control, going in there, making the ear go in a little bit inside the mesh. Try not to get the inside of the ear and the outside of the ear too close to each other, because if they get really close to each other, you can have some issues uh, with the sculpt kind of going through itself. I'm going to smooth this out a lot here because I don't really want this to be very smooth. So I'm holding down the shift key and then control key and kind of going in here. And then I'm going to make this ear kind of go back in a little bit. And carve that in. Let's save this again or control S. Now, because this is stylized and this is kind of made for beginners, I'm not going to go into like the anatomy and try to make like the anatomy of the ear and make it really realistic. I'm just going to kind of do a stylized ear. So I'm just going to have a little area coming out here and just kind of going around and then I'll hold down control and go in more on the other areas, kind of go in there and then come out here. And then the hole of the ear, I'm just going to hold down control and kind of make a hole for the ear right around there. All right, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't want to go too detailed, just something like that. So this is looking pretty nice now. I really like how this guy's looking. Um, let's go ahead and add hair and then also a neck. I think actually I'll do a neck first and then we'll add hair. Okay, so to make the neck, what I'm going to do is click on the clay strips brush. Let me just save this again, file save. I want to actually increment the save just so that if something happens, we have a backup. So what I'm going to do is go file, click on save as. And then right here, there's head.blend. I'm going to click on the plus button. And if I just move myself over, you see, so you can see here it's normally head.blend. But if I click on the plus button, now it's head1.blend. So if I save that now, now it's a separate Blender file. And so if something happens and we want to go back, we can just go back to the other Blender files. So when I'm sculpting, I use the incrementing a lot. So I increment the save. Also, when I'm doing video editing and some other things, I increment the save a lot. So I make multiple ones. So if I just want to do it again, file, save as. 
plus and then click on save as it's as easy as that so you can do that if you want to just to keep a backup of your sculpt okay so to uh to make the net come out i'm going to go to the clay strips brush make sure dine topo is turned on maybe i'll turn this to like a six or something just so that's lower detail and i'm just going to go around and make big circles and try to make it come down a little bit okay i'm going to turn this back to like four now but you don't need to do that okay just kind of come down try to make it kind of in the center of the head not too far out at the neck but not also way far back too because the head the back of the head does come back quite a bit um it does go back before going into the shoulder so and this is where again like looking at anatomy references can be really helpful okay so now that i've brought that down a little bit i'm going to go to the just go to the grab brush and just pull that out because it helps a lot also if you wanted to you could use the snake hook make that really big and kind of pull that out that'll add geometry as you go i actually uh, i actually really like the snake hook for doing things like this so i'm going to use it for a little while so I'll just kind of pull this out i'm not going to go ahead and make like the shoulders and everything but i'll just make almost like a bust of this guy oh and you can see here that i went too far out and it kind of made this all low topology i'm just going to control z that hopefully that didn't happen for you go back there Okay, so I control Z that until control Z as a verb. I control Z that until uh, this is back. So let me just be a little more careful now with the snake hook, because if I go right here, you can see it lowers the topology. So let me just pull that out again. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now that I've kind of got the basic shape, I can use the clay strips brush and just start to go in here and make the neck uh more round because the neck is pretty round and kind of make it fit in with the head more because right now it doesn't really look a part of the head so kind of go out like this okay and then also there are two big muscles right here and they're used to pull the head on each side and they they start up right here and they come down and they kind of meet right here so if you want to add this in of course this is stylized and this guy isn't like super muscly but i'm just going to lightly add that in just to kind of show where that is also um as i talked about in the sculpting with blender for beginners tutorial uh drawing can really help so if you if you like sketching or drawing um practicing that every day or just practicing it in general can really help uh, to make your sculpts better because you can draw whatever you want to sculpt and that kind of help you to get more familiar with the anatomy and the forms and things like that. So I draw every day because drawing is one of my main art mediums that I like to do. So I draw every day and I like to draw faces and stuff. Um, if you're not super big into drawing, I still think you can get good at sculpting without drawing. So if you really don't care about drawing, you can still get good at sculpting without, at least I think you can, but I think it's going to be easier if you know how to draw. I'm going to use the grab brush and catch, kind of pull this in a little bit. There we go. So now we got that muscle there and I will smooth it out later because right now it's a little bit uh, big. Let me just bring this down a bit because I don't want the neck to be that long. And I think the neck needs to be thicker. Just generally, when you look out far away at this guy, <laughs> the neck is pretty thin. So I'm going to use the clay strips and just kind of go along here on the sides of it and make the neck thicker. Okay, on the back here. And then also on the front here, there's the Adam's apple. Now the Adam's apple, you can see it better with males and you can't see it quite as easily with females. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit stronger, not too strong, but just make this one a little bit stronger, just like that. And maybe give him a little bit more fat on the bottom of his neck there. And I do have the auto smooth turned to 0.1. I really like the auto smooth for things like this because I don't want everything to be super sharp and defined. Um, so something like this, I don't need to smooth, use the smooth brush. I can just kind of go around this lightly and the auto smooth is going to kind of smooth that out. All right. And I also think going along with the forms can really help. So instead of like, for instance, instead of sculpting the uh, muscle there like that, if you kind of go along the opposite way of the forms, I think that can really help to 
kind of show the forms better, help you to sculpt it a little bit better. There we go. Of course, I don't want this um, muscle to be too pronounced, so I'm gonna go along it on other sides, kind of next to it and smooth it out a bit more. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of content. Um, I do really enjoy sculpting, so if this is something that you guys want to see more of, let me know, and hopefully I can do more of it. But yeah, just let me know if you guys like this this kind of follow-along sculpt. I, I, I do. I'm enjoying it. Now, looking at it from far away, I think the neck is just a little bit still too thin. I do like that he's kind of like... <gasps> um, but I think the neck is just a little bit too thin. It's like It's like he just opened up his birthday present. You know, <gasps> and he got, he got just what he wanted for his birthday. Let's save this again. I'm going to increment the save again. So I'll go file, save as, click the plus button and then click on OK. Okay. So I just want to make the neck a little bit thicker, but not very thick. Uh, not very, not much more thick. It's pretty good how it is. All right. I'm going to use the grab brush and kind of just pump, bump this up a little bit because so that it will look a little bit more like a, a shoulder here. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and kind of smooth this whole area out a little bit. Smooth the bottom out. Also, you could go to the scrapes brush and kind of scrape this away and make it look more like a clay bust. Just kind of sharpen up that edge if you wanted to. Sweet, okay, I like that neck other than just smoothing it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna smooth it out just a little bit more, smooth it out on some sides, save this again. But other than just smoothing it out a little bit, I like how that looks. Okay, so um, let's just smooth out a few things here, smooth this out. If you wanted to, you could try to like add more topology here and smooth that out, but we're gonna be adding hair on top, so I'm not really gonna worry about that. And we are gonna be using a separate object to make the hair. I just think that um, using a separate object can really help to kind of make it look better, and that way you're not worrying about messing up your face. I'm just going to kind of go in here, smooth out a few of these things. Okay. I'm just lightly smoothing it out. So let's go ahead and make the hair now. So I'm just going to go back into layout here, press shift C to center the 3d cursor right there. I'll press shift A and I'm going to add another UV sphere. I'll press G and Z, bring it up. And that's really all I'm going to do. I'm just going to go back into sculpting. Now I'll use the grab brush with G. And just from here on, I'm just gonna just pull it around. Um, later on, after we have the basic shape of it, we're gonna turn off the symmetry so that we can make the hair different on either side. So make that going around, pull that out a little bit, something like that, okay. So now I will add the Dine Topo and go to the clay strips and just kind of start to make the basic shape of the hair. So I'm not going to get too detailed right now because um, I want the hair to be different on both sides. So once I just make the basic shape of the hair, just kind of smooth it out, make it generally look nice. Then I will turn off symmetry and then we'll uh, go ahead and add a little bit more detail to the hair. I think maybe adding a little quiff would be fun too. So I'll try adding a little quiff um, on the front of him. Okay. I'm going to go to the uh, scrapes brush make it a little bit bigger and kind of scrape away some of this to kind of flatten it out. Cause right now it's kind of, I feel like it's going up too much. Okay. The hair really can change how they look. It's crazy. I find that, um, adding different styles of hair on your character really changes the effect of like how they look and what kind of person they are. So, that's better. I think it's still a little bit too high up. So I'm going to scrape away clay there to kind of push it down a bit more and definitely don't feel the need to like move around as fast as I'm moving. <laughs> I should probably slow down a little bit too. I think I just sometimes start sculpting really fast and don't, don't realize it. Okay. I'm going to go to the grab brush and just pull around this shape just a little bit. I think what I'll do is make the bottom here a little bit smaller, pull this a little bit up. This, you can see it's coming through here, so I need to pull the hair back a little bit. Pull this down a little bit. Okay, and then I want to make a little bit of hair coming right in front of the ears. So I'll just 
for now, just drag that down, drag it in a little bit, and then we'll go to the clay strips and just kind of sculpt that in. Okay, I'm gonna go file and save this again. And now I'm going to turn off the symmetry so that when we sculpt on this side, it won't be over on this side so that we can uh, make it different on either side. So I'm gonna click on this X button, that'll turn off symmetry. And now if I like sculpt, you can see that it's not sculpting on the other side. So we can make the hair different. So I wanna add a little crease in the hair. So I'm gonna go to the crease brush make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm gonna kind of start to go in right here and make a little crease, just coming from the side of the head, going all the way to about the center of the back of the head. So I'm just gonna go along there. And I'm not really gonna worry about this coming through because I will fix that later. I'm just gonna worry about uh, carving that in. Okay, I'm gonna go to the grab brush again, pull this up a little bit, and then I'll try adding a little a little quiff there. Okay, that really looks cool. I like how that's looking. Okay, pull that out a little bit. Okay, let's add the quiff. So I'm gonna go to the clay strips brush. Auto smooth is turned on at point one. I'm gonna kind of go along here. Kind of make it like the hair. This is where the hair is coming out of the head more. And then it's kind of going around. That's looking pretty good, but I think I want to just use the grab brush and pull it out even more. I'm gonna use the draw brush, go along here, kind of make a, it a bit rounder. And because I'm so far zoomed out, you can see that the topology is really low. So I'm gonna turn this down to like a two. And then if I zoom out, I can still sculpt with more detail. Now I could turn on the constant detail right now. I could turn that on, but I don't really want to. I'll just turn it down and then sculpt from farther away. Okay, smooth that out a little bit. Add a little bit more in here. Okay. Now this is pretty round. I wanna make that a bit sharper. So I'll just hold down control and go in with the clay strips brush, kind of sharpen up the edge there and then smooth it out just a little bit. Carve that in to give it a little bit more of a sharp edge. Oh, that was going out. I need to hold down control, go in. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to use the clay strips brush and kind of drag from the center there out to give it a little bit more sort of realism. Give it a little more stylization, a little more detail because the hair is kind of coming out from that area. A lot of the hair is, so I'm gonna just go along there, kind of bring that out a little bit. And then if you want to, you can just, just smooth it out just a tiny bit. Okay, and then you can kind of see the skull here. So I'm gonna to go to the grab brush and just pop it up until you just barely can't see the skull. Okay, so I'm gonna call the hair done so I'm just gonna go back into object mode. I'm actually going to select everything and shade it smooth just to kind of see how it's looking. And then let's go ahead and make some teeth and then we'll see how a tongue looks as well. And then let me go back into the layout here and then I'll just get rid of that. We don't need that, okay. So shift C to put the 3D cursor in the center there. I'm gonna press shift A. I'll add a cube, scale the cube down and bring it inside the mouth. Tab in edit mode, I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut right there. And then I'll go into wireframe, box select this side and press X and delete vertices so that in that way we can add, uh, add a modifier, click right here, add modifier, add a mirror. And then if I tab into edit mode again, I'm gonna press three and that'll go to this face select. Click on this face, just kind of rotate it and extrude it back a bit. Now I wanna make this whole thing, select the whole thing, bring it out a little bit and rotate it just a little bit. Oh, and you can see that these aren't connected. I need to click on the clipping to connect that. And then if I drag in, that way the mirror is gonna be connected with that clipping there. Okay, select this, extrude it back a bit more. You might need to go into wireframe and just kinda of do this or go inside the mouth. And then in object mode, I'll shade that smooth. Okay, I'm gonna press Control-2 to add a subsurf, 
and then it's really smooth now. So I'm going to add some loop cuts in here to sharpen up those edges. So I'll press control R, add one here, another one with control R, add a loop cut there, another one here. Okay. And then I'm going to add a tongue. So I'll press shift A, add a cube, another one. We'll just scale it down and bring it into the mouth, scale it down a bit more, bring it out a little bit. Actually, to, uh, while I'm sculpting the tongue, I'm just going to bring it out right here. And then once we're done, I'm going to bring it in. So I'll press control two to add a subsurf modifier tab into edit mode. And I'll press control R add a loop cut here, control R add another one here, and then control R add one way back here and then control R and add another one a little bit like that. Okay. Then I can turn this way up to like maybe four levels of subdivision. And then with my mouse hovered over this modifier, I'll press control a to apply that. And then let's go into sculpt mode. Now you can see here, if I just go over here, I'm in sculpt mode on the object. If I start to sculpt, something is very weird. You can see that this mesh, uh, this brush is really, uh, stretched. And I talked about this in my beginner tutorial, but basically what's happening is because we scaled this object in object mode, the scale is now messed up. So what I need to do is in object mode, select this object and we're going to press control a, and then we need to apply the scale. So now if we go back into sculpt mode, you can see now it's working properly. So I'm going to press control D and add the dino topology, the dyne topo. And I'm just going to start off by like smoothing that a little bit, just sculpting along here. Oh, and you can see, so this was, I'm glad that this happened because I wanted to show you what happens when this happens. I'm sculpting here and I want this to be the same on the other side. Cause like the tongue is kind of similar, pretty similar on the other side, but you can see here, this is not moving over. That's because I forgot to turn this on. So I'll turn that back on. But if you want to keep this the same and mirror it over, you can do that. So just go down here and you can see that there's this symmetry. I'm going to turn this symmetry on and then you can see there's minus X to plus X. That's going to make it go over here to here. I'm going to click on symmetrize and now you can see it's duplicated it over. And now that we have this turned on, you can sculpt right now, if this didn't work for some reason, you can play around with this and change this. If you're sculpting like this, this is going to be in layout here. You can see that there's this red line right here. That's the X axis. So this is negative X to positive X. So if that one isn't working, just try some of these other ones until you get the right one. Okay. So now let's sculpt here. So I want the middle of the tongue to kind of go in a bit. And this is too high detail. Let me turn on dino topology, actually turn it to like a four. There we go. Now you're not going to see the tongue very easily. You're not going to see very much of the tongue, but you will see a little bit of it. So I'm just going to make it look kind of nice. And then the center of the tongue usually has like a little crease. So I'm going to use the crease brush and kind of carve in there. There we go. Now it's looking like a tongue. <laughs> So that's going to be it. I'm not going to do much more than that. Uh, actually I'll use the grab brush and just kind of bring the front of it out a little bit and maybe the front in a little bit. Okay. Let's go to object mode now, and I'm going to bring this in here. I'm actually going to go back out to layout now, zoom into this with the period key, bring it back in. And there we go. We have the character's tongue. Okay, let's just do some basic materials now and kind of render this out. So I am going to jump back over to my main screen because I'm on my drawing tablet right now. So I'll jump back over to my main screen because I'm done with sculpting and then we'll finish this up. All right, so I've hopped back over to my main monitor now and I'm just going to go ahead and just do a little bit of materials and lighting. So I'll press shift A. I'm going to search for a camera. I'll move to where I want the camera to be and then I'll press control alt number pad zero to bring the camera to where we are. And I'm going to click right up here, actually down here and the resolution. I'm going to make this 1920 by 1920. So the bottom here is going to be 1920 just so that that's a square image. And then I'll press G. Uh, my camera is selected. I'll press zero on the number pad to go into it. G to move around. And then if I want to zoom in, I can press G and double tap Z and bring that in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go into rendered mode now. And then also on the camera settings, I'm going to click on the camera settings right here. This focal length, I want to change it to 70 because I think that looks a little bit nicer for a sculpt. So I'll press shift a, I'm going to add a light and I'll add an area light. 
just to rotate this area light, kind of pointing it at the sculpt, make it a bit brighter, scale it up a little bit. Let's do some materials, so I'll click on this, and let's actually make sure these are all shaded smooth. So I'll select everything, and then shade that smooth. You can go Object, and click on Shade Smooth right there. I'm gonna click on the face now, go to the materials, I'll add a new material. I'm just gonna make it, just make it whatever color you want. I'll just do something like that. Okay, I'm gonna click on the hair right here, click on new, make it whatever color. Maybe he dyed his hair blue. <laughs> I'm just gonna do like a brown color. And I'm not gonna be going into like texture painting or anything like that in this tutorial. I'm just kind of making a basic head. Okay, and then let's click on the teeth, new. Just make that a really bright color, bright white. I'm gonna click on the uh, tongue, click on new. Just make that like kind of a reddy, reddish pinkish color. Okay, let's click on the eyes now. I'm gonna click on new. This I'm gonna call like eyes. Oops, caps locks on, eyes white, and then I'm gonna make it fully bright and I'm gonna turn the roughness down to zero so it's really shiny. And then what I'm gonna do is go over to the eyes, I'll tab into edit mode here, I'm just gonna zoom in and I'll alt and select this loop, hold down shift and alt, select this loop and this loop, and then just press B and box like that. With that selected now, I'll click on the plus right up here, click on new, Call it eyes black. Okay, I'll make this a black color. Turn the roughness all the way down. And then we're still in edit mode with this selected. I'm gonna click on a sign. And now if we go back here, you can see that part of the eye is black. And then I'm gonna be adding an HDRI to get a little bit better lighting. So I'm gonna click on this world right here. Click on this and then I'll hit the environment texture and then I'll just hit on the open button. So I'm gonna be using this Kaylee Interior 1K HDRI on HDRI Haven. The link will be in the video description if you wanna download the same one that I'm using, but you can do whatever you want for the lighting. So I'm just gonna add this in. I'm just using the 1K version, open image. You can see that gives some nice lighting. And then I also want the background to be transparent. So I'm gonna click on this uh, rendering tab right here, the top one. Click on film and I'm gonna click on the transparent. And now the background is transparent. Okay, now we're almost done with this. I do want to add eyebrows. I'll show you a stylized way that I like to add eyebrows to make some stylized eyebrows. Also the skin, I'm just gonna change the color a little bit to something like that. If you wanted to make the skin a little more realistic, you could turn up the subsurf and then make this subsurf color like red or orange. And you can see the render times will take a bit longer, but it does make it look a lot more like skin because it adds that subsurface scattering. I'm gonna turn it to like maybe a red kind of color, the subsurf here, and just turn it a little bit up, like to 0.1 or something. Okay, let's go ahead and make the eyebrows now and then we'll just render out this finished stylized character. So I'm going to press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview. We can see our character. I, I really like how he looks. Uh, let's press Shift C, that'll bring the 3D cursor to the center, I'm gonna press Shift A, add a cube. We will scale this cube down and bring it right here. Okay, let's just add that uh, hair material, I can call this hair. So it's the same color as his hair right here, if you want to, or you can make it a different color if you want. I'm just gonna bring it pretty close here. And then actually, I'm going to tab into edit mode, click on these, so shift click on these front ones and just press X and delete vertices. So now we just have a little plane right here. Let's go to the modifiers now and I'm gonna add modifier and we are going to add the shrink wrap modifier. And what this will do is it'll take this and shrink wrap it onto whatever object we want it to be. The object I want it to be, you can see there's this target here. I'm gonna shrink wrap it onto the sphere. And that way, now when I move this around, you can see that it's uh, being pressed right on there. So I'll just scale this down, I can move it over, and now I can start to make the shape of the eyebrow. So I'll press E and extrude this out, just kind of bring it around like that. And you can see that there's some space there, but that's totally fine. Now you can see that the eyebrow is kind of going inside it, so I'm just gonna turn that offset up, and that way it's brought out there. Okay, so let's just make the basic shape. Just kind of make whatever shape you want. 
And then let's add another modifier. So I'm going to add another modifier. We'll add a mirror one. And now it's on both sides. Okay, and then I want to make it thicker. So I'm going to click on add modifier and add the solidify modifier. Go down here to the solidify modifier and drag out the thickness. And then now that we've dragged out that thickness, we can go back up to this offset and bring it down a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to press control two. That'll add a subsurf modifier right down here. And then I can just W, shade that smooth. And then if you want to make these a bit thicker, you could scale them up. You could also press control R and add a loop cut right in there. All right, so I'm just going to render this out now. And then once this is done rendering, I'll do a little bit of compositing to finish it off. All right, it's done rendering now. You can see that where we added that subsurf, it is kind of grainy. And I did render this at 100 samples. So now that that's done rendering, I'm going to go over to the compositing tab. And I'm just going to add in a denoise node. So I'll click on use nodes, add this in. And then uh, I'm going to press shift A, search for the denoise node, drop that in there. Now, if you have the node wrangler add on enabled, you can press control shift and click on the denoise node to add that in. If you don't have the node wrangler, just press shift A, add a viewer, just add in the viewer and then connect it up to the denoise. Now the background here, I can press V to zoom that out and Alt V to zoom that in. You can see how it's looking. And then if you wanna add some kind of background, just like a, a plain color, I'm gonna press Shift A, search for an alpha over, drop that right in there. And then this image here needs to be at the bottom one. And then this top image here, that can be whatever color you want. So I'm just gonna make it maybe like a dark blue. All right, and then to save this image, I'm going to go over here to the rendering tab. And then this is the render result. I'm going to click on this, go to the viewer node. I'm going to type in viewer node and there we go. So just find the viewer node and that way we can see what that node is seeing. And there we go, the finished image. So I can just click on image and click on save as and click on save as image. So when it comes to making like characters and stuff, there is a lot more you could do. You could do like texture painting and texture paint the skin and you could add texture to the hair or do like a particle system. But this is just for beginners, so I just wanted to have a very simple character and mostly focus on sculpting. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Let me know if you like this kind of content. Let me know if you wanna see more of it. And if you follow this tutorial, you can definitely upload your artwork somewhere online. Send me a link to it in the comments and I'll check out your finished artwork. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in a future video.